we are looking at ways of expressing our worship and God willing, as uh, we are moving on, we want to look at three things. We want to endeavor to look at three things and one of those things is the calling of a worshiper. And the second one is the life of a worshiper. Then the third one, the expressions of a worshiper. We, are, we want to, God helping us uh, briefly look at those three important things, the calling of a worshiper. One important aspect which you need to understand is that God has called you. You are called. God has a desire to walk with you and therefore he has called you. So we want to begin to look at that, number one, which is the calling of a worshiper. Amen. The calling of a worshiper. Please, if you are in church, I want you to interact with me by responding. Amen. Amen. Yeah, don't be quiet on me. The calling of a worshiper. And we are saying, <clears throat> number one, there that God calls us out of the world and sin to himself. God calls us out of the world and sin to himself. Now, when you look at yourself, I want you to understand that God calls you out of the world and of sin. He wants you to be out of the world. He wants you to be out of sin to himself, not to anything else, not to any person, not to any, anything in this world, but to himself. Now, in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, the scripture tells us that now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country. Tell your neighbor, get out of your country. Now, your country speaks of your place, the place where you are. Get out of your place. Now, he says, also get out from your family. Get out from your family. That speaks of relationships. Then it says, and from your father's house. It's speaking concerning some mindsets. And here we are talking of some strongholds. <laughs> some things, tribal things. Yeah, clan things. You know, when I was growing up, I'm still growing up, but when I was a still little child, we were being told concerning our tribe that they always kule kujikamba. Kujikamba ni kusema nini kwa kingereza? Exactly, to boast. When they boast themselves according to now the tribe where I come from. They say they are like the thigh of a, an elephant. You know, the thigh of an elephant, you can't shake it. It's <laughs> they were talking a lot of stuff. So the tribal mentality, the clan mentality, yeah, the local mindset, it's speaking concerning that. Then the scripture continues to say, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Praise the Lord. So God calls us out of the world and sin to himself. Now, he speaks three things which I have uh, said there. Get out of your country, meaning place. Get out of your family. And let, let me point out this, that if you want to progress in life, you have to step out. You have to step out. For you to progress, you have to step out. Amen. Ata hapa tunaweza sabua. Watu wenye walitoka kwao. Hawa kujenga kwa kale ka kuota aneeka wakibishana na the neighbors, the brothers, na sijui nani nani hapo. They moved out. God blessed them. They have progressed in life. Lakini wewe ukikatalia kale kaeka kamoja ndivo you want to fight for. You are here in Nairobi, the big land. God has Say it, get out. Now, wewe, you are just thinking, kila mara unapika simu kule, unataka wangalie, is mze saying anything? <laughs> you can't progress. You can't. So, you, there is the moving out. Amen? Get out. For you to progress, you have to step out. Out of the comfort. Out of where you are. You know, where you are is not where God wants you to be. 
He has greater things for you. So he wants us to step out. Then the second thing he says, family, speaking concerning relationships. Na hapa kuna noma, hapa kuna kuanga na shida. Relationships. Bwana siwe wapendwa. You know, I didn't plan to come down, but let me come down. Now, if this brother is washed by the blood of Jesus, he is saved. He is more important to me than even my brother, whom I was born with, who is not born again. I know you don't get that because you don't believe that. But let me come again and say to us, this sister, if she is washed by the blood of Jesus, born again, heaven bound, tongue speaking, demon chasing, <laughs> she is more important to me than my blood sister who is not born again. But the problem which we have is we don't get out of relationships. Family. Yeah. Family. If there is a family meeting, we want to rush there at the expense of the fellowship of the brethren whom God has redeemed and placed us in one family. Yeah. It's like your church Leo ni Sunday, lakini na kuna watu hata leo wanaweza kuwa wameenda family meeting. Na watu wenye wameenda hata hawa hawataomba ndio waanze anything. Okay. Think about that. Judge for yourself. <coughs> get out. Tell your neighbor get out of your family. Okay, let me read you this scripture. Luke 14, 26, it says like this. If anyone, tell your neighbor, if anyone, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yeah, and his own life also. Oh, you are not, you are not saying... <laughs> he cannot be my that is not me saying it's the one that saved you the one that called you the one that died for you saying sasa easy vitu ni real ni real yani amen okay let me not dwell there lord then he says father's house and i have said it speaks of tribal it speaks of clan mindset. It speaks of local mindset, the tribal mindset, the clan mindset, the local mindset. Yeah. God wants to remove us out of that. Amen? Now, I was telling the earlier service like this. You see, some of us, we have good sisters in the church. Praise the Lord, sisters in the church. Trusting God for a husband after God's own heart. Praying and fasting and waiting on God. And you, you are here a good brother, but your mindset, very tribal. You are looking at a very nice sister and your mind is thinking she's not mine. Very local, very corrupted mindset. Or you are a sister. Or if you are here and you are a father, and you are just thinking, my daughter, my son cannot, please, Okoka, tell your neighbor, Okoka. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So God is calling us to move out. Why? Because these things, they limit us. They hold us captive. Because God wants to make us. He wants us actually to see him as the big God who owns the whole world and who has all the peoples in the world. He wants us to see that. 
So if you see that Chinese guy, don't look at them with a bad eye, thinking these, these ones, our Kwanzaa. No, 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 no. Look at them. These are wonderful people made after the image of God. Yeah. Or oh, you'd think we will not see Chinese in heaven. <laughs> okay. Number two thing there. Let me rush. Number two thing there. God calls us to make us into something big. Into something great. He calls us out to himself. Then he calls us to make us into something big. Something great. That's why I don't judge you by the way you are. God is making you into something great. Amen. And there are three important things that are highlighted there. Yeah. Three things. And one of the things is you as the person, the worshiper, on this journey of worship. Because of what? You know, making is a process. Making is not, it's not a miracle. <laughs> it's not a par thing. It is. How many of us, we make some chapatis? We have chapati lovers. We are beginning tomorrow to pray and fast. So, <laughs> now, it's a process. You don't just buy unga from the supermarket, then you come, pop chapati on the table. No, it's a process. Amen? Some people, it takes a whole day. Yeah. And some brothers, they go a shortcut. But it takes, it's a process. It's a process. Amen? A process. So also, what we are saying is, you as the person, the worshiper. And this is speaking concerning our relationship with God. The revelation we have of God which brings us into that relationship. The relationship, the relationship which we have with God. You as the worshiper, please build that relationship. Build that intimacy with God. You cannot give where there is no relationship. That's why we are saying build a relationship, have a revelation. And you know the word revelation and relationship, it's like they go together. The revelation I have concerning you makes me to have a relationship with you. But if I have a shoddy relation, uh, revelation, you just understand we will have very little relationship. Okay? So revelation, relationship. Then number two is the altar, the place of worship. And this is speaking concerning the connecting factor that we have. Worship takes place on his altar. Not our altar, but his altar. The altar or the place where he is reigning. The place where he is in church. The place or the heart that is submitted wholly to him. We are looking at that. The heart that is wholly submitted to him. Worship takes place on the altar. So, in other words, we are saying we have to be submitted to God. We have to wholly yield ourselves to him. Then number three thing is the sacrifices. And now the sacrifices here speaks concerning the expressions of we who are worshippers. The relationship that we have. So, we express by our sacrifices. By what we do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because worship is or must be expressed. Now, a few scriptures, then we look at number two thing. A few scriptures, Genesis 12, 7. This is what the scripture says. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to your descendants, I will give this land. Yeah, I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. So we see Abraham, God revealing himself to him, God speaking to him, and he goes ahead and he does what? He builds God an altar. Now, an altar, in other words, you can't have an altar and there is no worship, there is no sacrifice. So the scripture there, in summary, it's pointing out that Abraham worshipped God. He gave to God. He sacrificed to God. 
He built an altar. He sacrificed to God. Amen. Are we in church? Now, Genesis chapter 13, verses 3 and 4. Still, the scripture says, concerning Abram, he says, and he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and I, to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Amen. So we see Abraham still making a journey. He's a worshiper. God has called him out. He's a worshiper and he makes a journey. He goes to Egypt. He goes, he does a lot of businesses. He comes, he's also loaded as uh, you know and so forth. But he comes still to the place of worship. He comes to the place of the altar. And he sacrificed, of course, there. And he adds to it, he prays. He calls on the name of the Lord. Amen. So wherever we move to live, we must build God an altar. A holy meeting place with God. Wherever you move, praise the Lord. Wherever you move, as our sister Bertha moved from where she was to where she is on the other side. She needs to build God an altar there, a meeting place. Now, as God moves you from Zimmerman to Kileleshua or Karen, you build God an altar there. If he moves you from this place and he sends you to where? Okay, somebody says U.S. or Canada or wherever for Alaska. Amen. Build God an altar there. A place of connection. Praise the Lord. Genesis 13 verses 18. The scripture says, Then Abraham moved his tent. He's migrating. He moved his tent and went and dwelt by the terrapin trees of Mambre, which are in Hebron, and did what? Yeah, he built an altar there to the Lord. He moved. He migrated. And he built an altar. That's why we are saying, wherever you go, please, build an altar to God. Don't stop giving. Don't stop sacrificing to God. Expressing your worship to God. Because you are not in deliverance church. <laughs> and there was quiet. <laughs> Amen? Okay. Now, among the things we are to give is a tithe. When you look in chapter 14 of Genesis, verses 18 to 20, you see Abraham doing it. Now, in this journey of worship, God teaches us and makes us to be obedient to his voice by telling us what to give. Now, this is important to me. Yeah, In this journey of worship, God teaches us. Come on, say, somebody say, Lord, teach me. Come on and say, Lord, make me, Lord, make me. To, be to, to be obedient to your voice. Amen. Amen. It's very important. In this journey of worship, God teaches us and he makes us to be obedient to his voice. And especially in the area of expressing our worship in giving. Amen. Yeah. So, you don't program yourself and say, Mimi ni mtu wa 50 bob. Uh -uh. Allow God to be speaking to you. What to give? Praise the Lord. Amen. When you are in a meeting, allow him to speak to you. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Uh, was it on Friday? Or Yes, on Friday. We went to a certain church to see a certain pastor because we wanted, he does sound. And we wanted him to give us the quotation and everything. And when we were in the church with one of our members, we were there, we discussed, we saw a lot of things, we discussed. Inside me, I felt I should give something here. I know those thoughts which are coming to you came also to me. You can't say, <laughs> uh, you have this and this, you... Uh, what, what, then I said, okay, I will obey 
Is on my discussions, ni? Yes. Because if you don't obey, now the problem is you will have problems. So I better obey. After all, giving has never made anyone poor. Yeah. So I obeyed and did what God and the pastor was loving, say, well, um, to a mungu. And then, then when that brother, because I asked him to pray before we left, placed my offering there on the altar. And inside me, I have the peace. Yeah. Obeying God is easier than not obeying. <laughs> because ukienda, unawezaenda na unaona, awendi. Amekufungia. So, I better obey. Amen. So what we are saying there is God teaches us and he makes us to be obedient in the way we express our worship. Amen. Amen. May the Lord teach you. May the Lord be with you even as you express this worship. Amen. Amen. Now let, uh, let me read this. That the ultimate of our obedience comes when God asks us to give our whole lives to give our future, to give our posterity. That is the ultimate of our obedience. We give our lives. Now, in the book of Genesis 22, verses 1 to 6, the scripture tells us concerning Abraham, God telling him, go and sacrifice your only son whom you love, Isaac. Now, this speaking concerning his future, it is speaking concerning his life because his life was in this son. But God is saying, go and sacrifice. Give it to him. Now, in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, the scripture tells us that I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? You present your body as a living sacrifice. You present. We always quote that scripture, but it's not easy. It is speaking just concerning like Abraham when he was told, sacrifice your son. Now God wants us to lay our lives. We give our lives to him. We surrender our everything. Our everything to him. Amen. Amen. I know at a time saizi ikipita kidogo. Wewe you are not, you know yourself, you are not surrendered to God. You will be thinking I need to be out of the church. Hatuko kama wale wa korino wenye wanaenda from samoja wako pale mpaka jioni jua ikitua. Is it ikitua? Yeah. Wako pale. Jua ndiye inawatoa. Siku ya ibada yao. <laughs> Amen. We will not keep you. We will release you early. <laughs> but we are just saying, can we give ourselves to God as he desires? Because that is the ultimate of our obedience to him. Not once, but always. Now, quickly, quickly, the life of our worshiper. Now, the scripture which we could read is Exodus 19, 3 to 6. It says, Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Verse 5 says, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. For six says, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Come on, somebody say, I will, I will. indeed Amen. obey God's voice Amen. and keep his covenant. Amen. Because I am a kingdom of priests. Yeah, you are a holy nation. Amen? 
So, one of the things, according to this scripture and other scriptures, about the life of a worshiper, number one, the life of a worshiper is a life of obedience. A life of obedience. And I have alluded to that. You obey God's voice. You obey God's word. You obey God's instructions. Come on, somebody say, I will obey God's voice. Come on, say again, I will obey God's word. Come on, say it again, I will obey God's instructions. So please, brethren, make sure you understand God's voice, you understand God's word, you understand God's instructions. Amen. Very important. Then number two, a life of a worshiper is a life of working hard and working smart. A life of working hard and working smart. Now, we cannot go to the examples of Abraham. How one man could have all that dominion of so many slaves and skilled that he could rescue a man from a nation that has captured him. That man was a tyrant, a great man. So, tell your neighbor, don't be lazy. Don't be, lazy. Don't be, idle, don't be idle. But be doing something. It's important. Amen. Now, we are living in a generation whereby idleness is one of the great diseases. Laziness is one of the diseases. Because there is the aspect of betting. There is the aspect of... Uh, they call them what? Yeah. Those, all, all of them enticing even believers. Yeah. 50 bob, just 50 bob. Then you can win 50,000. We multiply. That is silliness. That is foolishness. So you find a whole born again brother sitting there the whole day waiting for the updates. In the night, at night, at around maybe nine or eight, they do it maybe before news or something. You are just waiting with your numbers. Tell your neighbor, don't be lazy. Don't be idle. Be doing something constructive. Amen. Thank you for helping me preach to your neighbor. Now, 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 11 and 12, the scripture tells us that you also aspire to lead a quiet life. Tell your neighbor, lead a quiet life. Yeah. Live a quiet life. Yeah, with your neighbors, with everyone. Yeah. Then tell your neighbor also, mind your own business. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. Okay. Look at another one and tell them, work with your own hands. Yeah. It's just scripture. Or you need some interpretation. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> now, verse 12 says, tell them again, walk properly toward those who are outside. Yeah. Walk properly and you will lack nothing. Just walk properly. Obey those things. You will lack nothing. Buenas fio apendwa. Tuko pamoja. Tunaenda mbinguni. Na tumeokoka. Praise the Lord. Now, <laughs> I need to be finishing. But a life of a worshiper, number three, is a life of giving. Now, this one also is leading me to now the types of giving. A life of giving. And tell your neighbor, be philanthropic. Yeah, acha kukam konogam. Sawa sawa pendwa. Be a giver. Amen. Amen. Tell them, be a generous giver. Yeah. 
So we need to be generous givers, especially to the needy and the cause of Christ. We need to be. Yeah. Let me just highlight a few scriptures there. In Luke 7, 1 to 5, it gives us of a centurion. This guy, he was a centurion and he had a servant who was sick, ready to die. And he sent elders. He didn't go himself, but he sent elders to Jesus Christ and said, go and beseech him to come and heal my servant. So in verses 4, they went, and the scripture says, and when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, please, 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 Buana Yesu, please, Lord Jesus. Yeah. One of who that has sent us is worthy, is deserving. Yeye anastahili wewe uje kwake. Siyo mtu hivi hivi. Why? Verses 5. Can we read together? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, that man, he was worthy. Why? Because he was patriotic. He loved the nation. Then he also built God's house. He built them the house of God. He was mindful of God's house. Amen? Very important. Then Psalms 122 verses 9, the message Bible says, For the sake of the house of God, God, I will do my very best for you. Saying, for your house, I will do my best. I want to see that your house is doing great. I will do my best. Amen? Amen? The house of God. In Acts chapter 10, verses 1 to 4, it gives us Cornelius, a man who was also a centurion or of Italian regiment and so forth. Now, this man, the scripture says he feared God. This man, he prayed. And this man also, he did what? He gave alms to the people. Yeah. That was his lifestyle. And the scripture talks of God sending him an angel. Do you want angelic visitation? Fear God, pray, and give. Amen? Amen. Yeah. You will receive angelic visitation. Now, let me point out this. Love God's house, build God's house, seek the good of God's house, speak good of God's house. Be patriotic. Love your nation. Don't destroy your nation. Then give to people. Give also to church. Then pray and give. Don't be a broke prayer warrior or warrior. Yeah. You are worried. A prayer warrior. A worrisome. And you are warrior but broke. You, we don't want prayer warriors or warriors that are broke. <laughs> Amen? Tell your neighbor the way I see you you are a giver. Is that encouraging? Amen. Yeah, we pray, we give. We pray, we give. One of the things which uh, we, we, we learn from even uh, Bishop uh, uh, George Kijana is when he leads prayers or comes to church, especially when he is taking over. You see him laying a sacrifice on the altar before he goes on. And he encourages. Actually, every early in the morning when he goes even to his church, he does it. Because I was there some time earlier on. So it's a tradition which we can learn. As you pray, be a giver. Amen. Now, quickly in less than a few minutes, types of giving. Now, because we are expressing our worship, types of giving. Number one, tithes. Tell your neighbor, tithes. Tithes. Now, tithe refers to one-tenth produce or earnings or interests, income and profits given to the church and clergy. Amen? According to the Bible, Tithes are 10% of your income. Yeah, 10% of your income. And we are saying 
that you can't count it as an offering. And anything you give more than the 10% or the required tithe counts as an offering. When you give more, in other words, you are just counting it as an offering. Because according to God, tithe is 10%. There are scriptures that are there. So you could learn it. Now, for you to be better placed to give tithes, please set aside 10% of your income. Set it, set it aside and donate it to your church. Have an envelope always maybe with you. If you find, you will eat. Okay. Or take the pay bill number always with you. Praise the Lord. You set it aside. You remember the scene of uh, Akan? Let it not fall into your house. Sawa, sawa? By eating the forbidden. Yeah, the sacred. Then number two is the seed or offerings. The seed or offerings. Now, offerings differ from tithes. Unlike tithing, which has a required amount of how much you should give, offerings are more of a free will. It's a free will. It's up to you how much seed you want to share or to sow. So offertory refers to the giving in church every time we are in the presence of the Lord at the altar. It's only right and proper and in order that every time you come to church, you give an offering or offertory. Matthew 5, 23. Okay? Now, in the offering, when we talk of offering, the scripture says, if you sow sparingly, you do what? Yeah, because it's seed. And if you sow bountifully, it does what? Amen. Tell your neighbor, it's up to you. Yeah, it's up to you. Now, number three thing is the first fruits. The first fruits. And the first fruits are usually done once a year or for every new blessing you receive. Every new blessing you receive. You can purpose to do it once per year. Like our church has good traditions. Every year we are told, come with a yearly sacrifice. An annual sacrifice. You see, they are giving us an opportunity to participate into this. Or if you receive an increase in your salary or wherever, you set aside, you say, I want to give my first fruit. And Proverbs 3 verses 9 tells us to honor God with the first fruit of our increase. Amen. Do we read such scriptures? Ama tunasemanga pass. Or our Gen Z wametufunza reject. Don't reject that scripture. The scripture cannot be broken. Yeah, no, just understand the scripture cannot be broken. Number four, <laughs> alms giving, alms giving, alms giving. Now, alms giving, unlike the three that we have discussed, the tithe, the first fruits, uh, then the offerings, alms giving are for humankind. You give them to a person, to people. Amen? Arms giving. Unlike those three of givings, which you should give to God, arms are for humankind. You give it to someone. Amen? So I want you to look around. Just look around. Not the, the people you came with, but around to a people you never maybe even know. So, today, before the service goes, I want you to exercise alms giving. Be a blessing to someone. Just give someone. And that is where the scripture says, let not your right hand know what you are. I will not know you have blessed that person, but bless them. Amen? Amen? Yeah. 
hawaangali. Hebu imagine. You look around, then you spot. Before we say the grace, I will take hold of that hand and be a blessing to them. Amen? Yeah. Then I'll, uh, I'm finishing off. The other one is pledges, pledges, pledges. Now, pledges refers to the giving in church for a particular cause, well explained by the leaders. Our leaders, they will tell us what to give and for what cause or purpose. So we pledge, we say, I will do this. Yeah. Maybe Pastor Brian is, we are sending him to where? A mission in Australia. Yeah. For one whole week. So you rise up, you say, I will stand with the man of God. All the waters he will drink, if he drinks water, or all the juices he drinks, because he loves juice. It's on me. Yeah. Or even the upkeep there, the hotel that he will stay, all the meals are up to me. You pledge, you say, I'm going to stand with him. As you are there, yeah, your phone will be, or your bank account will be ringing with this every time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then lastly, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Now, thanksgiving refers to the giving in church as a way of returning to God for his miracles and blessings. His miracles and blessings in your life, like the gift of life. Like how many of us we paid our lives so that we are here? I was asking, the earlier service didn't have this, but how many of you, you paid to get married? You paid God, God, then God opened for you, say, now you have satisfied me, now I give you a wife, or I give you a husband. Even our father Abraham, uh, Adam, the guy, that guy, he just lied down. Did he give God anything to get Eve? And Eve was so magnificent till he could... It's like when he saw if everything in him shut up, shut, shut off, yeah? Till he say, wow, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Amen. Now the scripture says, blessed are you if you know these things and you do them. So today, please. Look for someone. Look again across. Spot someone for a blessing. Who wants me to bless them? Huh? Okay. I've seen only this hand that is this side. Who wants me to bless them? Okay, let me bless this. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So look for someone and today bless them. Amen. Amen. Amen.